some people deny facts and deny truth. Others deny that facts and truth are in any way in any danger. Both are wrong. We seem now to be living in a post-truth era. This does not mean that truth does not matter. Instead, it means that we are living in a time in which there are far too many people, especially in positions of power, who lie about or ignore reality while paying no political price whatsoever. Whether it is a matter of individual conviction or trying to get someone else to agree, post-truth is a phenomenon whereby one cares less about facts and evidence than about opinions and feelings in the formation of their own personal beliefs. Post-truth declares that an idea is so important that people have to compel someone to believe something regardless of the evidence. Post-truth did not begin with the 2016 election. The denial of scientific facts about smoking, evolution, vaccines, climate change, remind us of that. Apparently, we have this hardwired cognitive bias that makes us feel that our conclusions are based on good reasoning, even when they're not. And social media has not helped. Nor has the popular notion that there is no such thing as objective truth. There should be little doubt that we currently live in such an era. Truth is under attack from all sides. It remains to be seen whether there will be any long-term consequences for all this. But George Orwell, in his novel 1984, predicted there would come to be an assault on truth. It is happening in politics across the world and it's happening in the church. And it's happening in our own personal relationships. What is truth? It's a question that could be asked now, right now, as surely as Pilate asked it 2,000 years ago. What is truth? And I propose, I propose to you tonight that it's about the most important question on the table right now on your kitchen table, and the nation's tables, and in the Vatican. Yet there are deniers aplenty, not just of facts, but also of the fact of post-truth. A drumbeat of concern over all the lying and all the lack of accountability has been going on and, and sounding to muffled ears in many ways. We've refused to buy into the idea that post-truth is real. We citizens, we followers of the master, we cannot give up on truth. We must be shining lights of honesty and accountability in all the institutions we call our own and in our families and with ourselves. To say that there is, that we are in a post-truth era does not mean that no one believes in truth. It means that despite the fact that millions may care about the truth, we feel helpless watching the standards of truth and accountability erode before our own eyes. Some would argue that we can never really be post-truth. Post-truth represents a cultural shift. It's an alarm call 
that the truth is in danger, it's not a pronouncement that the battle for truth is over. It's sounding the alarm that truth is in danger. And it's reminding us that we can win this war. We can win this battle. For the truth, we can. In this, we must accept the fact that the truth is threatened, not just by those who deny it, but also by those who refuse to take truth denial seriously and so end up encouraging the deniers by claiming there's little to worry about so long as some of us are fighting back. Truth can be threatened despite the fact that many of us believe in it. We should not deny facts, truth, and reality, but neither should we deny the threat to facts, truth, and reality posed by those who would subvert the truth for political purposes on either side or because we're afraid the truth would scandalize the faithful or because it would leave our kids not looking up to us anymore if they knew the truth. Indeed, if you and I refuse to take the denial of truth seriously, if we deny the deniers, can we really be said to have cared about truth at all? Can it be said that we care about truth in the first place? According to John's Jesus, the kingdom Jesus kept talking about is a kingdom of truth. Listen how he puts it, this Jesus of John. You say a king I am, for this I have been born. For this I have come into the world so that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. To which Pilate could only say, what is truth? Jesus is the king of truth. And truthful for Jesus is reality as it is, not twisted by anybody's agenda, not compromised by exaggerations or hyperbole, no lies. For Jesus, it means letting reality stand on its own, trusting that it's enough, that reality, reality as it come to us is enough. We don't have to twist it to our own purposes, ever or to use our own truth to convince somebody of something we think they should believe in. Reality can stand on its own if we trust that it's enough. It's always enough. If God, God lives nowhere, if God does not live there in reality, letting it be what it is. No agenda in all the world, including the salvation of souls, can allow deception ever. Remember another truth, another truth of our church that can never be compromised. The end never justifies the means, ever. We cannot twist facts, deny facts for a good end, an end we believe in that is indeed good. We cannot do that. It's not okay. It's another lie. Even to save a soul, we can't lie. I have no right to deceive anyone, to convince anyone who Jesus is for them, to save their souls if I'm going to lie and twist the truth to get them there. Never, ever is that okay. Ever. It's getting harder and harder to know what's real. It's getting harder and harder to trust that people are telling us the truth. It's getting harder and harder to trust that the news feeds from the person across the table from me or on TV, or in those commercials, or from your priest, or your shaman, or your swami, is what they say it is. Now we have to have fact checkers, and fact checkers to check the fact checkers. 
for their facts. My friends, if we lose honesty, if we lose any sense of the real, it will be dissipated, and we will not know what is real anymore. Words won't mean anything anymore. They'll all just be a distraction, a distortion of what's real. We can end up so numb to all this. Do you ever wake up in the morning and feel your, your arm or your hand asleep? Or after sitting for a while, your leg is numb from having fallen asleep, we say. That's what numb feels like. We can get numb to all this. I was talking to one of our international students who comes from another country that regularly blocks information flows. So he cannot get real information without it being twisted by his government or even totally blocked. We all know this, he said to me. We all know the government blocks information. There's so much I can't get that everybody else in the world knows. We all know that they twist the truth to help us to see what they see and think like they think. We all know that. But we get numb to it, he said. We get numb to it. We have to get numb to it because it would drive us crazy to even think about it. We can do this, you and I. We can do this one at a time. We can commit to being honest with ourselves and with others. We can commit to holding those who lie accountable for the lie. Be he your priest or your pope or your parent or your president, be she your spouse or your child or your boss, be it your own self. We can commit to being honest and we can, can hold those who lie accountable before we get numb. When Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? He, says, he was asking a question we all could ask. Reality as it is, that's true. Nothing more, nothing less. We will not get to the truth if we twist reality on each other all the time or on ourselves, as a matter of fact. Some people deny facts and truth. Others deny that facts and truth are in danger. Both 